Hello, Nari McDiamond for Australia's Mining Monthly, and it's great to be with you for this final instalment in our three-part series with Hexagon. And in this conversation, we're looking at digitising human activities and how this can support operational excellence in mining. I'm pleased to say I'm joined by actual people, uh, Paul Thornberry, a senior manager with Hexagon, Chung Chen, an operational manager with Critical Minerals Company Eluka Resources, and James Cornweibel, a director with consulting firm Deloitte Australia. Now, Paul, if we start with perhaps a definition of, you know, what is digitising human activities and how can digitising, you know, such tasks actually drive operational excellence in mining? Well, that, that's a that's a pretty good question. So let's um let's start by let's have a quick description of operational excellence because sometimes it means different things to different people. But when we when we talk about operational excellence in this context, we're talking about you know improving all aspects of the operational part of the of the organisation uh, on on the on the actual site to you know, improve efficiency, reduce costs, enhance the quality of it. Uh, keep an eye on safety. Make sure safety is top of top of the top of the list there as well, which should lead to the other three that I mentioned before. So that's what we mean by operational excellence. Now, by digitizing operational excellence, what we're looking to do is to transfer a lot of manual, um, cumbersome, uh, paper-based or maybe you know, spreadsheet-based uh, processes into some kind of digital enterprise system, where that information is captured and presented to to the user and captured for for historical reasons. In a, in a digital system. Something like, for example, doing your, your operational rounds, your inspection rounds. Instead of doing it manually on a piece of paper, you're doing it on a, on a tablet that's connected by network to the operational control center. Permit to work, things like that. We're going from paper-based, cumbersome, slow uh, procedures and trying to digitize that. And the whole idea is to make the process more efficient, make it more quick, make it more reliable. Uh, reliability being the key aspect here as well, because when people are doing things manually, I mean, this may sound like a, a silly thing, but I mean, even spelling has an issue because people are writing down what they're doing or where they're doing it, and they might identify the piece of equipment. They might have identified it incorrectly as what they're working on uh, for an inspection, for example. They might not have the exact pump number correct or whatever. Like that. So by digitizing these efforts, we're making sure that the information that's being gathered is more correct, it's, it's easier to use, and then as it goes through the system, it's more efficient. And you're saving time. I mean, I've, I've talked to people who have digitized systems. Uh, we've helped them do it over the last two decades. And I think my, my favorite comment I ever heard is by, by making this easier for me to do, I can actually do my job as opposed to do paperwork. And that's what you're trying to achieve because you're paying the people to do actual task of making the production run better. And by digitizing the systems, you're improving operational excellence and everything else flows from that the speed, the efficiency, and the safety is improved by digitizing into operational excellence. Well, this is something that the oil and gas sector is known to have embraced. Chung, how well do you think digitization is being picked up in the mining industry? Yeah, look, um, I think that, you know, the two sectors, um, obviously different companies uh, will have different sort of journeys and potentially horizons in terms of, you know, their plan for digitization. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily say that one is lagging behind another, so to speak. I mean, you know, in my time at Fortescue, there have been uh, mobile systems sort of uh, being built to track production and in operations, and that's sort of touted to have saved, you know, 30 million annually. Um, and sort of at Aluka, we sort of going through the same similar process where our production accounting systems, we are sort of looking at um, digitizing them so that we can, just as Paul pointed out earlier, uh, do analytical work rather than actually uh, codifying the data. Uh, and so what this requires actually is all the systems in place, uh, instrumentation in place, and then sort of once you have that, you have people that actually have to continue maintaining that system that you've built. Uh, I see a lot of companies right from juniors uh, leveraging Excel. And when the people go away, and this kind of talks back to the uh, uh, more, uh, the second episode where we talk about 
digitization where you know when the people leave their complicated excel that they've built it all falls away and so how does the business mitigate the risk in that aspect so in short i think the mining sector is sort of not necessarily inferior to oil and gas but i would say uh, different companies are on different uh, pathways or trajectories along that way to becoming future ready Chung, you mentioned that Iluka is looking at this digitisation in, for example, the accounting side of things. Are there any other examples you could share? Yeah, um, there's lots. Uh, and that, you know, some of the other examples are as we sort of move towards uh, more complex and more detailed production forecasting, for example, the leveraging of uh, digital shadows or digital twins, which is quite hot in the sort of mining uh, industry and in fact other industries as well, is how we could pivot and leverage AI. Um, and this talks to a bit about the first episode around sort of predictive maintenance as well, is uh, if you are able to uh, codify or digitize your entire process plants and activities along your supply chain, and that you are able to install systems in place to capture that digital data such that you can now have either a digital twin or digital shadow. That is real power. Quite often we see a lot of organizations that collect a lot of data but not putting it together to mean something. And that, you know, that meaning, what does a number mean to you on a screen? Um, and crunch that number many times over to then be able to provide an accurate forecast. And then that's where the real productivity and the real dollars um, get get uh, realized. So uh, some part of the project that I've been working on in Aluka was going through and sort of redoing their sort of pit to port reconciliation systems, as well as the pit to port forecasting systems. Um, and, you know, there are tools off the shelf out there. They could assist in doing that. Um, but more often than not, you find that your own sort of uh, process flow or value chain is quite specific. And so sometimes you just need to partner with somebody to then help you achieve that. So, yeah, that's, there are a lot of examples out there. Um, I'm passionate in this sort of uh, planning and operational space. Uh, and, you know, I, I see that sort of done well at different organisations and then we're trying to mature Aluka on that pathway. Well, as you've outlined, there's, there's definitely some advantages to operational excellence when it's done well. But, James, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on some of the challenges that companies face in trying to bring these digitisation processes mm -hmm. on board. Yeah, often the, um, well, the technologies available in place but you know so often it comes back to that people and the change management um, aspects you know that cultural shift in understanding the importance of managing information in a you know both a standardized and a consistent way so it can be really leveraged right across the organization um, we work with a number of you know number you know, many clients around you know what is the the process and you know what's the optimized process and then you know helping them understand around well if we can improve how we're working you know a pro, you know working on a particular activity um in, in the system now but what are the upstream and downstream benefits by then you know publishing the information that they're working on in a you know, digitized way the other area that's you know also you know typically overlooked is you know providing really transparent um governance and controls so we understand the the quality of the information or data that's being created. So we, we understand that it's, you know, it's of good quality and provides also that platform to improve the quality of the information that's, you know, developed or captured through the digitization of a process. Well, if we looked at the bigger picture, perhaps down the track a few years, James, how do you see the digitization evolving in mining and how it could improve things further and is it a, a big part of that is the integration and adoption and understanding of what it can bring yeah i think it's really exciting times for you know individuals but you know people and their organizations particularly with um ai 
automation and mobility, you know, really rapidly maturing and becoming, you know, so accessible, um, you know, for, for organisations. And, you know, once these analogue processes are digitised um, in a standardised way, it really provides the organisations, you know, for um, to reimagine how work is executed. And, you know, I'm quite excited about, you know, what are the innovative operating models and technologies that then can be added on to this information to really drive safety and productivity improvement opportunities. How about you, Paul? Do you see exciting times ahead in this area? Oh, for, for sure. I think um, I think it's it's interesting. I've, I've been, without giving away my age, I've been doing this for about 25 or 30 years. And uh, I'm, we're doing things today that, you know, we only dreamt of 10 or 15 years ago. Um, if, we, if we look about what we've been talking about over these last uh, three sort of uh, podcasts, and uh, we've um, if we just address it here in general, it's it's a lot of things that James and, and Chung have mentioned is uh, I'll highlight a couple. When we're doing these processes and we're, we're addressing, you know, the evolution of these uh, evolved mature systems and working through, you have to recognize that you are going to change the culture of your company. It will it will change. Uh, we're not just replacing a paper form with an electronic form. You actually will change your processes, the way you work will change and the idea is to then make it more efficient and flow into it touching on one of the things Chung said is you've got all this data but what does it mean well now that you've captured all this data you can examine it and you can use that data to, to examine your process and your procedures and your work and see how you can make it more efficient and more productive uh, the, the people who are actually doing the work with with these processes they tend to actually it may sound crazy but they actually start to enjoy their work more because they can focus on their work as opposed to what they see as just the cumbersome paperwork to help them do the work. And a lot of that matters. Um, it, it's going to be interesting. It's, it's, it's an interesting process. It's, I think one of the key words that was used throughout this thing is evolving. Digitalization, by its very nature, has to evolve with the company's requirements. And if you try and take a big bang approach to use the opposite of evolving, you, you, you will um, fail spectacularly. It's a, you have to do it in an evolutionary manner. You have to pick what you want to do, work your way through it, bring your culture, bring your company with you, bring all the staff with you, and then migrate to where you want to get to. Um, a lot of the companies we've done it with over the last two decades, they they really hit the sort of thing after about two to five years. That's where they really start to see the value of it. And you have to push through that evolutionary process to get to that end stage. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Chung, did you want to add any final thoughts? Yeah, look, um, as we mentioned before, digitization is that evolution uh, process. And you know, what I find most of the time is that people will stick to what they know and the subject matter expert because Excel is accessible and there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people will tend to sort of build their prototypes in Excel and that's quite standard across the industry. But there needs to be realization that you need to mature it into systems. And quite often that means that the organization be, needs to be mature enough to pair the subject matter experts with um, data science experts. And that's when you can start really digitizing and then leveraging the power of analytics and AI and all these new fancy tools come your, uh, coming our way. Uh, and then that evolution is going to be pretty rapid and it is definitely an exciting time ahead and i look forward to the, the next coming decade in the mining industry thank you for sharing your insights for australia's mining monthly and hexagon and if you missed any of our earlier conversations you can find them in the links above where we look at how to get a handle on knowledge management and some tips on improving operational excellence thank you everyone for your time